I'll show you about load hold valves in cylinders, what, the, what it does and, and how they work. This particular cylinder uh, came off of a basket tilt. And there's one right here. And you can always tell because the hose, instead of the hose going right into the cylinder, it goes into another type of a mechanism. This right here is the load hold valve. And what it does is it holds the load. So it's got a spring and a valve in there. And it you can actually raise it up and take the hose completely off. And if it's got a load hold valve that's working properly, that cylinder will stay right there and not move. It's made for uh, man lifts, cranes, all different kinds of things where the manufacturer does not want that to anything to happen. So what happens to them is they'll get something inside of them. There's also a series of O-rings in there and backup rings. And it's possible that one of them blowed out. It's possible it doesn't seat good. But if you ever get a cylinder that has a load hold valve and it creeps, Figure out which direction it's creeping in and then go find that load hold valve and take it out and look at it. Take it apart, disassemble it and make sure that the O-ring seals and everything is it looks normal because you'll probably find your problem. A little piece of debris gets stuck in one once in a while or a uh, spring might break. Anything like that can happen to them. They're really nice to have if you're, especially if you're in a man lift and you're standing straight up and down and all of a sudden it was to blow a hose imagine what would happen to you that's why they're there they're there for a reason but to disassemble this cylinder and take it apart what I like to do is I just take the whole entire valve out completely out and that way it will you know like taking a hose off of a regular hydraulic cylinder where it can get air behind it on either end and then you can pull the rod out with a load hold valve that's not going to happen. You take the hose off, that's not going to happen. You have to take the valve completely out, and then, once it's out, then it will let air go into the cylinder so that you can disassemble the cylinder and take it apart. I was looking at it here this morning a little bit, and I was going to show you something that it's hard to deal with. Uh, this particular cylinder, if you look right here, you'll see that on the head gland, it has two Allen set screws that go in and it sets against the thread to hold this head gland on. This one here, if you look at it, you'll see where it's damaged. It's going to be fun to get that out of there. And you'll also see that there's no spanner wrench holes. There's nothing in here other than the fact that it looks like somebody had a big pipe wrench on it at one time and, and it's got some pipe wrench marks all over it where it was probably resealed at one time. But uh, when you get something like this, they can turn into a problem. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to take a long tapered punch like this and set it down in here and try to knock that back where it belongs a little bit where I can hopefully get an Allen wrench in there. And if not, I'm hoping that I might start out with a smaller one and wobble it around in there until I get one to fit decent enough where I can get that out. So this O-ring here seals the body, and then there's an O-ring and a backup right here, and there's an O-ring and a backup right here, and inside you see there's a little valve, slides back and forth. See when I pull on it, push and pull on it, you see it moving in there? Sometimes that piece comes out of this end with a cup and sometimes it's made like this where it stays inside like that. But that spring tension on this is what makes it build enough pressure to override the spring tension to let the cylinder move in one direction or the other. But that's your load hold valve and what it looks like. If you're having problems with one, take it apart. See if any of these seals are bad. 
sometimes you just find something you can't see with your eyes. Anyhow, take these plugs out and let it get it draining the oil out of this cylinder. And we're going to disassemble it and pull it apart here. Both of them come right out once I got her straightened out a little bit with that punch. And there is no, no, uh, <clears throat> that wasn't so bad. Now I've had some of these cylinders that are put together like this where this piece that's going to come out, this head gland, when it comes out, we're aluminum. And man, if they're aluminum, you sometimes have a real pain on your hands trying to get them apart. I'm hoping that I can just take this one and stretch it out enough and hit, hit the piston against that head gland to knock it out. That's what I'm hoping for. Not too bad. Get ready for the oil. We're gonna look down inside that barrel and see if we see any scarring or anything in there. pretty good in there so I just pulled the cotter key out of this thing there's a cotter key hole goes right through the right through this uh, rod right there one side was already broke off and the other side all I did was barely touch it and it broke off always use a new cotter key if this cotter key would have broken off inside of this cylinder with this thing running and was in here dancing around it would have scarred up and ruined the cylinder from the inside out it would have ruined it and chances are it might even have went back to the valve body and screwed the valve body up you don't know but for what a cotter key costs put in a new cotter key don't ever reuse a cotter key throw them away put in a new one self lock it yeah, that wasn't bad pull that piston off of there o-ring behind the piston See where it fits in that little groove right there. So you got two piston seals. Old ring in the groove. Head gland. Pull the head gland off. There's a backup ring and an old ring here. There's a U cup and a wiper. And we're going to start on the outside by putting in the backup ring first. A lot of backup rings have a little, like a bevel in them. Backup ring always goes on first, and that bevel goes up so that when the O-ring goes on, it faces, the O-ring sits in that bevel. I always try to pull them and then rotate them and make sure that they stay straight. The next one we're going to put in is going to be the U-cup. Here's our new U-cup, and it's stiff as heck, so we're going to need a U-cup tool. U-cup tool. And the open part, the U part, always goes down. So... Put him in there, and I'm going to wind him up like that so once you get it all wound up this is what it looks like we're gonna go right down in that groove and let it unwind and it pops right in there 
That is the handiest as pocket on shirt. Next we're going to put in is going to be our dust wiper. And it just sets in the groove. Just kind of bend it around and push it in there like that. So there's the head gland for that one. So we've lubed everything up. The head gland, the piston, all the O-rings, everything's all lubed up. Now all we got to do is put it back together again. Slide our head gland back on first. Our piston, our O-ring goes down. Next. That goes on. <clears throat> Runner up with brand new cotter key. We always remember to put a new cotter key in. It ain't worth what it cost not to have a cotter key in there. A new one. It is a self locking nut, but they put the cotter key in just for safety. So, whatever you do, use a new cotter key put in that barrel but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lube the inside of that barrel to get this barrel all lubed up here there's a nice taper on the inside of it and we got plenty of lube on our piston seals we also are going to remove the load hold valve so that when the piston goes in, that the air that's displaced, it's got a place to get out. So take the load hold valve and take it out of there. And then we can put our, our rod and our head gland and everything right back in there. Get her set up on there and give her a little jiggling. Then we'll slide our head gland in there. Then we'll get our head gland nut and we'll spin it down. Remember we had two set screws, one that came out and one that we had to straighten to get it out. So we're going to put in two new set screws, snug her up real good and snug. We'll get two new set screws and put in here. We're going to replace these two hoses, put our load hold valve back in, and we'll be ready to put it back on again. Not too bad, is it? 